Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're going to be reviewing an amazing, you know, quick and easy rendering application known as Nebula Render. So the guys from Nebula Render, they reached out to me, showed me the software, really cool stuff. If you actually know how to build this hammer, you would be able to create interesting things out of this. We'll talk about the price in just a bit, but if you want to get this tool, it's for free and you can simply use this for anything that you want as far as it has to do with rendering. So a couple of features that you need to know before you start using this tool is first and foremost, it has interactive ray tracing, which is really cool. I love that as well. Uh, they claim to have an intuitive interface. We're going to review this tool and talk about that right now. We also see things like photorealistic rendering, which is also something really cool. And of course, you can try this software and also see a couple of, you know, demos that the guys from Nebula has actually gone ahead to do. And one interesting thing is it also supports subsurface scattering and you can also play with index of refraction, all of those things. And let's just get right into it. The minute you install the Nebula renderer, you might actually notice one thing. Although the guys from Nebula have said they are going to fix this, with this present release that I have here, it seems not to be actually working. Although I've contacted them about it over a period of time, and it simply has to do with the registrar. So once you install this, you probably might not see this within the registrar. Then you have to go to your C drive and actually attach that somewhere so once you open up the nebula renderer there is an interesting way how this tool works so how it works is quite simple so you need to go from here file which is actually easy instead of using the whole import export thingy you need to come over from file and simply hit open now what open actually does is you can open the native files which is the .nsn files you would also be able to open obj fbx and also collada files that are .dae so i'm just going to simply open one file that we downloaded from one of those free content websites link is in the description in case you want to check those ones out and it is fairly easy to actually play with i mean definitely if you've used any other software before it's fairly fairly easy to play with now some of the things that you need to know before you get started is the navigation navigation is quite tricky here because for here you need to press w a s d q and e for you to rotate around your object there is no quick key to actually framing in on stuff you actually have to come here to frame in on anything that you want at the same time you don't really have the whole industry key which has to do with alt or holding down control clicking and rolling around the only way you can do this is by using the middle mouse button which you can use to zoom in and zoom out you also make use of your right mouse button which you can use to rotate the camera especially if you click and hold and then of course you can rotate things around and at the same time you have your middle mouse which you can use to actually pan things around so next thing you need to also note is the ui is fairly easy stripped down straight to the point you know there's no too much talk about what you shouldn't do and what you should do from here you can see this actually starts out the interactive preview rendering which we're going to look at and this stops it the menus are also very stripped down and very easy and straightforward other things you also need to know is from here we have basically only two types of light there is a directional light and also there is a point light so if we want to get the directional light we can just simply punch this here and from here you can change it to either the point light which is also called omni light you can change it from there and from here you can also throw in the omni light which you can also work with now the omni light has ranges and also has radius so i'm just going to dial this all the way to 500 just to have something like this and you can see the model which we brought in is just sitting around here now by just looking at this model you would notice that we have a material that is set here now it brings us to the material now the way the material works is quite simple so if you want to create a material you can either create that by clicking here going over to the section and clicking on material or just clicking here to create another material now by clicking here and creating a brand new material you can assign this material all right so you can assign this material to anything that you want so i can assign this material to an object that i have here and i can change the material type from here so you remember we talked about sss of course you now have sss directly here so if you just click here you can also notice that the parameter changes if i'm going with the standard you also notice we have a different parameter so i'm just going to keep it as standard and let's continue to talk about it so with the standard thing set up there other things that you would see is you can change the ambience of what that material looks like you can change the diffuse of what that material looks like 
and at the same time you'll be able to change specularities so if you want this to have more specularity you can turn that up and if you want it to have you know less specularity you can turn them down and so with that going on you probably be asking what about textures how do you add textures to this because you haven't actually seen a place where you can add textures i gotta show you that i'll show you how you can do that so how you can add textures is quite simple so if you have your texture files which you've done from maybe any other 3d app you can simply just drag them and drop them directly here so any of the textures that you have you can just you know drag them and drop them directly here so you can see it and you'll definitely notice that it tells you imports is done so if i click here i can click and pick out this and simply drop it directly here so if you have multiple materials or multiple textures that you've created like you've created the specular you've created the normal you've also created the diffuse or the emission as well you can throw these things here you can click here to close this and you can you know go ahead and replace this with something like that so i'm just going to set this to white so let's just set this to white real quick so we can see this here if i click over here you notice that my viewport actually has this stretching this is something i've also talked to the guys from nebula and they've said they would fix this in the upcoming update so this shouldn't be a deterrent uh, since it's going to be fixed so i would seriously suggest that you go through and try this tool now you also notice that we have all of these things this is for your camera views so depending on how you want to look at your model you can actually have this here we have the whole tools that you can play with here which is the rotate you know scale basically your transform tools and at the same time you have lock camera and unlock camera which has to do with framing your model so we've already talked about that and if you want to check out the wireframe you can see the wireframe now let's talk about the interactive rendering because that is one cool stuff that they have so if you press the playback button you see the interactive preview which is quite fast and cool thing is they do support cpu and gpu so they do support both the cpu and the gpu rendering and i think since everyone is going towards gpu it kind of makes sense i'll actually go through and open up a scene which you can find directly on your website amongst the downloadable stuff that you can play with so i'm just going to open that up and simply just bring in the dragon scene so i'm just going to say no and drag this directly in here so with the dragon scene here you can see we have a whole lot of tests and use cases and you also notice that we kind of have a skybox so if you've played with unity before you would notice that this is a skybox which you can literally play with and if you go over to the environment tab you'll be able to see how you can arrange this skybox which is actually called cube map and you can see how you can work with that okay so let's try out the interactive preview so i'm just going to press the playback button and you can see right on the reason why this scene exists is so that you can see how things work so i think this is more of a test so that anyone that wants to use this tool can actually see how things work directly here i'm still not a fan of the whole stretching of this thing i really really think that they should fix it and at the same time you know i'm not so much of a fan that you don't have a one key button once you have uh, something selected and you can just simply zoom to it the fact that you have to do this all the time you know select something and simply press this button all the time uh, kind of puts me off so i think that if it's possible to tie this if it's possible to tie this to a shortcut key it would be really really nice now the shortcut you have here is quite quite you know untraditional like the other ones that we have so if you want to use any of the scale rotate or translate to the way you work with these things is by hitting the control and you work with control t control u w and also control u which is a little bit off for a tool that is just coming out and at the same time if you want to toggle rendering you can toggle rendering by hitting you know the space bar and control at the same time this could be nice this could be good but I just think that some of the keys that they have here are not so friendly. Other things that I also wish that we could see from a tool like this is if it supported HDR, it would make a lot more sense. It would make a lot of sense for me. I, I can tell you that it would make a whole lot of sense for me if it supported HDR. Because right now, you know, going into Photoshop, cutting these things here and there is an extra step which i don't think anyone would like to play with if there's an opportunity for us to actually have this all right the light if this is if it's possible to actually have multiple sets of lights it's going to help a whole lot the whole idea of having the materials here looks cool it's nice i like the simplicity of this entire software i can tell you that 
you can also import and export materials if you go over to the website you can go to the gallery and you'll be able to find stuff and i think if you go over to the download section you'll also be able to find free materials that you can work with but i'm not so much of a fan of having materials that you have to download separately yes of course this is a very lightweight tool but then i kind of think that you know having materials that you can just throw in once you open up this software would actually make a lot of difference there's also some few things i don't really really see when it comes to rendering i don't really see the ambient occlusion on scene i also think it's something that will make sense if we can see it and at the same time if i go ahead and select the light go over to the sections where i have the light nodes you know if i select the light like this and select the light node i don't see where i can change the the shadows the shadow i can't find a place where i can play with the shadow change the shadow how i want it to be now i'll talk about the camera in a bit because right now if you set something about this point and let's say i just keep this and lock this within this section and i choose to lock my camera here so let's just pretend let's just pretend that i choose to lock my camera right here so i'm locking this camera and it says camera locked now in every other software the minute you lock your camera to a certain point you cannot do this you cannot move that camera all right you cannot move this camera but now you can see i can literally move this camera without any care in the world and each time i click here it comes back now it's good it comes back but then i don't know the reason why we're locking this camera in the first place because to me locking the camera simply means you want to lock it to a specific view so you don't move it around if there's a chance of having multiple cameras to be created it's going to make a lot of sense we can have multiple lights we can have multiple materials i so wish we can have multiple cameras so you can lock one camera and then you can use the other one to travel around and so if you want to start playing with this tool link to where you can find it is in the description and you can start out with the free version and if you want to use it commercially you can pay for it here and you can get all of the instructions here and you know if you want to get the free samples you can get all of these things as well link to all of this is going to be in the description so just in case you want to play with this you can get started i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section now i asked a couple of people about this tool in the community and no one actually got it right so the name of the tool is called nebula renderer and i'll be giving away licenses that has to do with this tool and also license that has to do with some other tool very very soon so just keep your eyes open and check out the notifications as they roll in i would like to know what your thoughts about this tool is in the comment section and if you like this tool you like this video you tried this go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to turn on notification and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace